It says here we'll need an adapter to couple the universal joint to the transmission. Hey, Mick, did you hear me? Yeah, I heard you all right. Let, uh, toss me that end wrench, will you, Fred? Oh, uh, okay. Now, if I could only get... So, sorry, Mick. You, you hit my... I didn't mean it, Mick. Oh, it's, it's all right, Fred. I, I, ow, I shouldn't have had my head in the way. That's right. You're not hurt? No, it's, it's all right. I'm fine. Oh, good. Well, here she is, boy. Huh? Boy, she sure is a beauty, huh, Mick? Yeah, you can say that again. I gotta hand it to you. Congratulate your friend. That was a wonderful idea, putting in that pressure system. It's made all the difference in the world. Oh, I wouldn't have thought of it, Mick, if you hadn't pulled the plugs and checked the fuel mixture. I don't know what I'd do without you, Fred. I don't know what I'd do without you, pal. I'm putting her through underneath here. Just, uh, excuse me. I'm just going to get under here and finish up. Just give me a little shove, will you, Fred? Sure, pal. Right. <laughs> Sorry, pal. i got to be more careful, Fred. I... It's all right. It's all... it's all right, pal. I'm okay. Well, Fred, it looks like this is the year we're going to win the grand prize of the championship drags, huh? We should have won it last year, except we hooked up the accelerator pedal linkage to the carburetor in reverse, remember? Yeah. The more we stepped on the gas pedal, the slower it went. <laughs> uh, Michael, there's a gentleman here to see you. Well, well, Mr. Rogers, how are you, how sir? How are you, Mulligan? Oh, fine, thank Evelyn? You. Hi, Mr. Rogers. Excuse how do you like our new rod? Yeah, it looks pretty. How does it run? Runs just as pretty as it looks. You know what we call it? The Mull Dev Special. Huh? Don't forget, you have to be at work in half an hour. Oh, don't worry, Mom. I'm going to take the 8.30 bus. Bus? What did you build this car for? To hang on the wall? Well, this isn't quite ready to go yet. <laughs> oh, it looks so weird. Mr. Rogers, are these hot rod cars safe? Mrs. Mulligan, it's the business of the National Hot Rod Association, which I represent to keep them safe. Oh, well, that's a comforting thought. But no car is safe unless there's a conscientious driver behind the wheel. Our organization stresses driver training as well as maximum mechanical safety. Uh, if you'll notice, Mr. Rogers, we, uh, we've installed a new flathead engine with uh, multiple carburation. Yeah, we bored the engine out three sixteenths, stroke to quarter, and with the special heads, it gives us eight and a half to one compression. Uh, start up the motor and let him listen to it. You got it. strip and test her. Yeah, but we ought to find out how she accelerates before we spend any more money on her, Mick. And well, just who are you spending oh, money on? Oh, oh hi, I, Pat. We didn't see you. Uh, Mr. Brown wants to see uh, us. Not so fast. First, I want to know who you're taking out Saturday to the drag strip. Our Muldev special. That's right. The sweetest little rod this side of Bonneville Flats. Oh, that car again. <laughs> what do you mean, that car again? I'll be glad when the hot rod show is over and you two can talk about something besides... Twin exhaust pipes. Oh, now, wait a minute. You wouldn't say that if you knew the good work he's been doing on that. Now, wait a minute. I don't do all the work, Fred. I just take your advice. You tell me what to do, and I do it. Like the time you told me I ought to take Pat out. <laughs> he told you to take me out? Yeah. Oh, but I was going to take you out anyway. But it's nice to know that your friend approves. Well, thank you, Freddie, for your stamp of approval. Oh, that's all right. What's a friend for if you can't come to him for advice? Well, the minute I saw you, I said to myself, there's the girl for my pal Mick. You said it. I remember, yeah, and he was right, wasn't he, Pat? Well, 
I guess I should be thankful he didn't make you take me out on the drag strip and test me first. <laughs> oh, that's Mr. Brown. You two better get in there. I, I wonder what he wants. He probably wants Freddie's permission to take his wife out to dinner. <laughs> What kept you? Oh, it was, uh, it was my fault, sir. Oh, no, it wasn't, sir. It was my fault. Mickey's always prompt. Oh, wait a minute. Look, fellows, I didn't call you in here for a meeting of the Mutual Admiration Society. The time has come to appoint a new chief of pages. You mean, uh, White Braid? That's right. <laughs> Since you fellows have been here longer than any other members of the page staff, the choice is between you two. Well, Mr. Brown, if only one of us can accept the position. I think I know the man for the job. Freddie Devlin. Oh, no, I'm not the one for the job, Mr. Brown. Mickey's got all the qualifications. I hate to disagree with you, Fred, but I'd be very proud to serve under your leadership. Well, no, Mick, I, I think... Look, fellows, I haven't time for any hearts and flowers. Let's flip a coin. Well, Mr. Brown, our friendship doesn't allow one of us to be promoted over the other. That's right, Mr. Brown. You see, we've been friends over 20 years. We, we met a long time ago when our mothers bumped baby buggies in the market. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Mr. Brown. I remember as if it were only yesterday. Happened right in front of the meat department. We were only pardon, eight months pardon old. Me if, if I, I... Just get it straight, please, Fred. It wasn't the meat department. It was the vegetable counter. <laughs> no, it was, it was the meat department, mate. Fellows, please... It was the vegetables, I tell you. You want to see my baby book? I, I don't care about your baby book, Mick. I mean, my mother's told this story about 500 times. Well, I've got a little news for you. Your mother happens to be wrong. And now, wait a minute, Charlie. Are you calling my mother a liar? Of course I'm not. Fellows, please. What difference does it make where you met? Well, you're calling somebody a liar. Oh, don't be so bullheaded. Oh, oh so I'm a bullheaded liar. All right, huh? if you want it that way, you're a bullheaded liar. Yes. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Now, take it easy, fellows. You're friends, remember? Mr. Brown, I'll take that job as head page. Oh, no, he won't, Mr. Brown. I'll take it. If you give him the job, I'll be forced to resign, sir. I can't work under anybody who, who twists the facts to further his own purpose. Twists the facts? Yes, sir. Look at him. Now you see him in his true colors. Now, just a minute. Own. I've had enough of this. This is a business office, not an arena. That's all right with me. As far as I'm concerned, I never laid eyes on you. You remember the tie I borrowed from you? Well, you can have that back. Big deal. <laughs> remember the belt you gave me for my birthday? Well, you can have that. Here's the shirt. You can have my shirt. I don't care about the shirt you gave me. What about the shorts you gave me? No, you that's have... enough! <laughs> Straighten yourselves up and get back to your post before I fire the both of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. that it had to end up the way it did. It took us a whole year to build this thing. Yeah, we did put a lot of money into it. Went without lunch to try and save. Oh, well. Better late than never. Well, you know what I always say. Everything happens for the best. Now, when I win the grand prize, I won't have to share it with somebody who contributed very little. Well, you're going to win the grand prize. That's right. With what, a half a car? I'll rebuild it myself. All right, rebuild it yourself. Here, you don't want to forget your manuals here. Well, I guess this is it. Well, it sure looks like it. What? It. <laughs> oh, it's too bad it couldn't last, but it's just one of those things. Yeah, that's for sure. Look, I'm, uh, I'm going to go get a trailer, and I'll pick up all this stuff later. It's all right. Take your time. Take your time. And remember, all this stuff belongs to me, so hands off, please. Oh, I wouldn't touch it. Don't worry about it. My hammer. Can I come in, 
son? Sure, Pop. Come on in. How's it coming? Everything's coming out fine. You'll be ready to road test tomorrow. Say, I notice those two wheels are different sizes. Is that the latest spad in hot rods? <laughs> well, I had to beg and borrow. I ran a little short on money. This here, this is my spare. Yeah, that looks like my spare. <laughs> no, uh, that on the other side, that's your spare. <laughs> Say, winning this hot rod prize means a lot to you, doesn't it, son? Well, you know it does, Pop. But with all the money, time, and effort, I don't want to see it go down in the drain. Well, you can do it all yourself. Now, why don't you call Freddie Devlin and straighten out your differences? I can't do it, Pop. He's, he's too bullheaded. Well, you can call him, can't you? <laughs> Any man that takes back his idea of changing the heat range of the spark plugs is beyond reckoning with. Freddy did that? That he did. Good evening. Oh, Mr. Rogers. Come right in, sir. How are you? How are you, Mick? Mr. Rogers, may I present my father, Mr. Mulligan, Mr. Rogers, representative of the Hot Rod Association. How, How do you do? do? What happened here? Well, I just modified it a little bit with a few of my own ideas. Modified it? <laughs> Looks like you've ruined it. Well, Mr. Devlin and I, we've dissolved our partnership. Gee, Mick, I'm afraid the association can't allow this car to be entered in the judging. Well, why not? It's not the way a car looks, it's the way it performs, right? Well, yeah, but... Wait till you hear the engine. Let me start it up here for you. Wait till you listen to this. Leave the application blank with you, just in case. Good luck. There goes a year's work up in smoke. <laughs> Hello, is this the Devlin residence? Well, may I speak to Mr. Frederick Devlin, please? Call for you, son. Oh, thanks, Dad. Oh, don't go. Hello? We have never met before, Freddy, uh, Mr. Devlin, but I am interested in the forthcoming Hot Rod Association contest. And Scuttlebutt has it, unless you and Mickey Mulligan get back together again, you don't stand a chance in winning. Oh, yeah? Well, I got news for you, Mr. Uh, uh, Smith. Smith? I've heard this voice before. Well, I suggest that you stop being so bullheaded and apologize to Mickey Mulligan. I, uh, I have a feeling that he'll accept your apology. Me apologize? It's Mickey. Look, Mr. Smith, alias Mickey Mulligan, alias Poor Sport. I recognize that phony voice. Phony voice? Why, I've never used a phony voice in my life. I just dreamed it up. Okay, have it your way, Mr. Smith. Only when Mickey comes in, you'll be sure to tell him that if there's any apologizing to be done, he's the one that's going to do it. And you can tell him that he's going to flip when he sees what I've done with the parts I took. The Devlin special's a thing of beauty. <laughs> That was a long time ago. You know, those boys have been pals most of their lives. Yes. And the Devlins and the Mulligans have been friends a long time, too. You know, Joe, we can't let those kids carry on this feud. Oh, we've got to do something to get them back together. You bet we do. So why don't you talk to Freddie and have him apologize to Michael? Apologize for what? Your boy started it. He should apologize. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Tom. There's no use being bullheaded about it. When you're wrong, be a man and admit it. I'll admit nothing. Your boy started it with that temper of his, and it's plain to see now where he got it from. Oh, is that so? Yes, that's so. You mulligans are all alike. 
I don't see how we stayed friends as long as we did. Bullheaded, that's what you are. Bullheaded. Step outside and call me bullheaded. Oh, that would be a pleasure. <laughs> On second thought, I don't think I'd waste my time with you, Joe Mulligan. And you can send back my power saw and lawnmower, too. <laughs> Freddie and Michael, and then Tom and Joe. Now, what are we going to do to patch things up? Oh, we ought to give them all a good spanking. If they're going to act like children, they ought to be treated like children. Oh, yeah, that looks better. Well, it just doesn't look like the pattern. And I don't look like the model I saw it on, either. <laughs> Nonsense. You'll be thrilled with it when you get it finished. Now, how about the tea? Oh, I'd love some. Sometimes I think our husbands are more juvenile than our sons. Yes, just imagine them fighting like that. Well, look here. Nell, do you remember when that was taken? Oh, that's when Freddie and Michael graduated. <laughs> Never did get it straight how they got those black eyes. I, I think Freddie started it and Michael finished it. Or was it the other way around? Well, it really doesn't make any difference. It's all forgotten. One thing you can say about us, Nell, we never fight over trivial things. Now, we're too sensible for that. Oh. Our husbands and sons could learn a lesson from us. How true. Like yesterday afternoon when you came in with that hideous hat, I could have started a call just by mentioning it. But I ignored it. What hideous hat? Oh, you know, that monstrosity dripping with rhinestones. Helen Devon, how can you have the nerve to sit there in that formless piece of sackcloth and call my new hat a monstrosity? Formless piece of sackcloth? <laughs> Nell, you're letting that vicious temper of yours run away with you. Now I know why that husband of yours acts the way he does. You've driven him to it. Well, I don't need to stand here and be insulted. Sackcloth. Monstrosity. <laughs> That's perfectly all right, Mrs. Mulligan. I understand. But tell him to stay in bed. The rest will do him good. All right. Goodbye, Mrs. Mulligan. The rest will do us all good. <laughs> <laughs> Mulligan won't be in today. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Brown. Good morning, Evelyn. Here are the uh, scripts you ordered. Put them right on the desk. Thank you very much. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? So quiet and peaceful. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Brown, I noticed that Mickey wasn't in the locker room this morning. His uh, uniform was still there. Oh, was... Mulligan won't be in today. It's a beautiful day. He won't, won't be in today? No, he was working on his car and he burned his hand or something. He's in bed. He, he burned his hand? Mm -hmm. He's in bed? Mm-hmm. Oh, honey. Well, Freddie, it isn't that serious. <laughs> hey, your tie is still crooked. Huh? Hi, I'm Mickey Rooney. Huh? Michael? Well, what are you doing out of bed? Oh, I had a nice nap, Mom. I'm going back to work. I feel fine now. No, Freddie Devlin just phoned. Freddie? Yeah, he seemed worried about you. He's coming over to see you. Worried about me, huh? huh. He's coming over here. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got to get to the store. I wish you'd go back to bed. Well, maybe I should go back to bed. was this bad? Oh, oh. I'll recover. I'll, I'll, I'll get over it. <coughs> Maybe. How did it happen? Oh, I'm just glad that you weren't there, Fred. No use in both of us going. G going? 
Yeah, I don't blame you for not being there when I tried to put in the transmission by myself. You tried to put in the transmission by yourself, Mick? Yeah. Well, that's a two-man job. It's all my fault. I... I forgive you, Freddie. I forgive you. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just a no-good heel, that's all. No, no, Fred. You're good. You're good. <laughs> now, let's talk about something pleasant. What'd you bring me? Just some flowers. Yeah. And this. And this. Ooh, it's, it's heavy. <laughs> it's heavy, Fred. What could it be, huh? What could it be? Oh, Fred! Oh, you shouldn't have. This is wonderful. I knew your car would be a lost cause without it, Mick. Yeah. What about your car? Well, I was kind of thinking maybe we could start work on the Moldev special together again. Do you mean it, Fred? <coughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's a wonderful, wonderful idea. Tonight, after we get home from work, we'll stop by your place and get all of your parts, and we'll build a Maldev special up again. You tricked me. What do you mean I... Wait a minute now. Look, and I can explain everything. <laughs> you played me for a chump. We can win that race if we stick together, Fred. I fell for that Camille act. Listen, please, won't you listen to me? You tricked me. I'd like to buy back my introduction to you. Well, look, I was only doing it for the... For the good of us both. The good of us both? Oh, why don't... Gee, Mick, I, I didn't know you had this. Yeah, I... I've had it ever since the day of the game, Fred. Hollywood High. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the day we won the championship. Yeah. You scored the winning touchdown. Yeah, but I wouldn't have been able to do it unless you threw that terrific block for me. <laughs> oh, are you kidding? You were the greatest little scat back in the league. Yeah, you were the greatest blocking back in the country, too, running interference for me. <laughs> Fred, the Muldev special is waiting for us. <laughs> you said it, pal. You said it, pal. Fellas, <laughs> it's getting late. The regular trials are going to start in less than three hours. Be with you in a minute. We want to be sure and make that qualifying time. Hey, hand me that wrench over there. We uh, want to tighten this nut. We'll tighten it up good. We don't want any bugs in this thing. <laughs> sure good to see those two together again after that silly feud, isn't it? Yeah. I'm glad Mickey and Freddie made up. Although it cost both of them the head page job at the network. Who got the job? Nobody. Mr. Brown's waiting for them to have another feud. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lil, I really love that hat. Oh, are uh, you talking about my monstrosity dripping with rhinestones? <laughs> it's an original, you know. There's not another one like it. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> now, remember, fellas, this is an acceleration test. I'll clock you for a quarter of a mile from a dead start. Uh, Roger. To qualify for the official trials, you've got about 16 seconds. Oh, don't worry. We can do it in 14 flat. Well, just to be on the safe side, I think I'll advance this spark a little bit. Well, now, careful, Molly. You need to want to overdo it. Yeah, that's right. We don't, we don't want to go to the moon, you know, just down the road a piece. No, wait a minute. I don't think we can advance the spark too much. There we are. Ah, that's good. And now we're all set to go. There we are. Hey, you sure you didn't advance it too much? Quit worrying, will you? We need all the engine power we can get. Just wish us luck. Well, here's hoping. Hold on to your hat. Too much compression. <laughs> Mickey Rooney will be back in just a moment. And now a word from next week's sponsor. Well, that was the good word from the sponsors who will be bringing you our next show. Be with us then, won't you? Incidentally, Freddie and I got the bugs out of our Maldev special, and it's ready for road testing again. I bet it'll get up and go this time. Compression. Good night, folks. <laughs>